Okay, let's talk a little bit about growth rates and doubling time. We just showed how super important exponential growth is going to be to our simple state equations. Um, but you may see exponential growth in terms of a general base B as opposed to being in the base E. Is that annoying you? Do you wish it was in base E? Me too. I really do. Because if it was e to the rt, then I would know how it relates to the state equation x prime is equal to rx. A lot of times, though, in various different resources, we're going to see exponential growth denoted as some sort of initial condition. This is the y-intercept that I'm calling x naught, times some sort of base to the t. Dang it. Can you please write that a way that I understand it in terms of exponential growth? in terms of base E. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna rewrite the number B as a base E, and that way we'll see how it ties in with the solution so the X prime is equal to RX. Okay, so B, I wish you were writing that as E to the something. Right, what I'm saying is that this equation would be a lot better to handle for me, I see how this relates to my study of differential equations. If this was written as x naught times e to the rt, right? But right now I have it as e to the bt. So can you write the number b as e to some value? And probably the double question mark here is going to be some value that references the original number b that we started with. Do you remember that from pre-calculus? Okay, here, I'll give it away. Um, it has to do with the fact that E has an inverse. Do you remember what the inverse of E is? E to the X is inverse is the natural log of X, right? Nat logarithms are the inverse of exponentiation. So if I want to write B in terms of E, it's going to be E to the natural log of B. Remember that now? Because E and LN are inverses of each other, and so they cancel out. So the exponentiation operation that I'm doing in base E is being canceled out by the natural logarithming that I'm doing here. And then it cancels out, and I end up with the original B that I started with. Okay? So how that ties in with this is that instead of writing B to the T here, I'm going to rewrite the number B as E to the ln of B. That's what, you see, this B is the same thing as writing this right here, and that's all raised to the T, okay? But then remembering your exponent rules, that's actually equal to X naught E to the ln of B times T. And remember before I was saying how much I wish that this was in terms... This was written as x is uh, x naught e to the rt. And so when I try to match these up, you can see that the continuous growth rate r is related to um, exponential growth in any other base by the fact that the continuous growth rate r is equal to the natural log of whatever base you are originally working in. I hope that um, with some practice that starts to feel more comfortable for you because a lot of times you may see, for example, you may see some sort of growth rate described as like, I don't know, x naught times 2 to the t. Maybe I have something that doubles every hour and t is in hours. And if something's going to double every hour, it would be really useful for me to use the base of 2 because it's getting times 2, times 2, times 2 for every additional hour that I wait. But in order to have it match up with the magical state equations that we were talking about before, remember the magic of the fact that x prime is equal to rx is solved with this solution, x of t is equal to x naught e to the rt. In order to match that up, I'm actually going to want to rewrite this as x naught times e to the log base, the natural log of 2 times t. Okay? And so the continuous growth rate for something that doubles once per time unit is that it's continuously growing at the continuous growth rate of r is equal to log 2. 
Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about doubling time, and which is like the question of how long does it take for something to become twice as much as what it was before? Let's talk about that doubling time. So. Let's say that we have something that's growing at an exponential rate, x naught times e to the rt, okay? And we want to know how long is that going to take to double, right? Well, how much of this stuff did I have when time was equal to zero? If I plug in t is equal to zero here, remember e to the zero is always one, so my starting amount at time is equal to zero is just this number right here. That's why it's called x naught. That's how much I started with. Okay, so I start at p is equal to zero with x of zero is equal to x naught. I start with x naught amount of this stuff. And so the question of doubling is how long does it take until I have two times x naught? Because two times x naught will be double of what I had before. So whatever amount answers this question is going to be known as the doubling time. Okay, so let's try to work this out. I'm just going to straight up solve the equation and see what I get. I'm going to solve it for time, and I'm going to see how long it takes for my output to be double of what I had before. Okay, so here's an equation that I need to solve for t, because I want to know how long. That means I have to solve this for time. How long does it take for me to get 2x0 out of something that's growing at a continuous growth rate of r, where I started with 1x0 of it? Okay, I've got exactly double now. But how long did that take? Let me solve that for t. Well, the first thing I might want to do here is just divide out by the constant that's on both sides. Divide out by x0 on both sides. Because you see that's going to have a nice cancellation process. So this is going to be a really general answer no matter how much you start with. This is going to tell you generally how long it's going to take to double it. And so that leaves me with the equation that 2 is equal to e to the rt. Now let's see how much pre-calculus you really remember. I want to solve this for t. Let's say that the growth rate r is already known to me, but the question I have is a question of time. How long, how much time does it take for me to get to double of what I had before? What are you going to do to both sides of this equation in order to solve it for t? Take the natural log. Yep, yep, you're going to want to take the ln of both sides. So you're going to take the natural log of this side and you're going to take the natural log of that side. Okay, so I'll do this one at a time. The natural log of 2 is just called ln of 2. And the natural log of e to the rt, uh, what does that simplify to? What if I wanted to take the log of e to the something? Remember log and e, they're like related somehow? Oh, right, they're inverses of each other, remember? So they cancel out each other's operations. And so if you're canceling out the exponentiation by taking the natural log of it, you're just going to get whatever you had in the exponent. So you're going to get RT. So now I've got a statement going up here that the natural log of 2 is equal to RT, and I simply want to solve that for T. So I'm just going to divide both sides by R, which is the constant continuous growth rate that's known to me in this problem. And I get um, a statement that ln of 2 over r is equal to t. Or, to answer my question, how long will it take until I have double of what I started with? It's going to take me ln of 2 over r time units. So the answer here is t is equal to ln of 2 over r. That's the answer for the doubling time, but hopefully you feel like it's not something that you need to remember or rememberize because it's something that you can derive using the properties of exponentials and logs, which was our pre-calculus knowledge. Have you ever heard of this rule called the rule of 70? It's kind of like this back of the envelope rule of thumb that says if you know um, that exponential growth is occurring at a continuous rate of r, 
then it takes about 70 divided by r time units in order for the thing to double. Let me write that down and we're going to see how that's related to what we just derived as the answer for how long it takes to double. Okay, sometimes this is called the rule of 70, and it's just like a little bit of a back of the envelope calculation. Let me show you how it works. It is convenient, let's say if you're out in the field and you don't have a calculator and you, you can't do logs in your head, um, this is going to be a convenient way for you to think about how long it takes something to double. So the rule of 70, and this is a rule for doubling time. And the rule says that it takes about 70 divided by R time units for the population to double. And that's if we know that it's growing at a continuous rate of R percent. Okay? Um, for example, let's say that I have a population and it's growing continuously at 2% continuous. So let's say my population is growing at about 2% as a continuous growth rate. How long is it going to take for that population to double? Or let's say that I just um, invested some money at 2% continuous growth rate. How long would it take for my investment to double? The rule of 70 says that's going to be approximately 70 over 2, so 35, 35 time units. So if this was growing at a continuous yearly rate of 2% continuously per year, that would be in years. Or if this is a population of um, bacteria that's growing at a daily continuous growth rate of 2%, that will be 35 days. So it's going to be 35 of whatever your uh, time units are that are tied in with that continuous rate. Well, that's a pretty cool rule. That's pretty handy. But why? Where did the number 70 come from? Um, we actually derived this rule, right? And it says that the time that it takes to double is exactly equal to ln of 2 over r. Um, break out your calculators, everybody, and make sure that you're using the natural log, not the base 10 log. And you tell me, what is ln of 2 approximately? Just tell me to the first two digits, what is ln of 2 approximately? It's approximately 0 0.69, which, if I round that up to the... Um, just the tens place, that's about 70. That's why the rule of 70 works, is because the log of 2 is, it's about 70. It's 0 0.69 dot dot dot. Um, and then r, you see r is usually as a proportion rather than a percent. And that's why the rule says growing at a continuous rate of r percent. Because remember that when we do percents, we take um, the actual rate and we multiply it by 100%. And so here, same thing for the log 2. We would take the log 2 and multiply it by that conceptual 100%. And then we would get about 70. And that's why the rule of 70 works. Cool, huh?